Oh boy, we're gonna have a swell time tonight. Come get some. Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything. In regards to The Boring Company, I hope you're all well. So, there was a very, very interesting tweet from The Boring Company about a week ago. Um, absolutely fascinating tweet. I actually made a, a video about four days ago in regards to it. Decided to bin the video because I wanted to think a bit more about potentially what was going on. Because this is a major development for the Boring Company. This is absolutely critical to them achieving a large, uh, affordable tunnel network that is quick to build and can be easily replicated in multiple cities. So, Proof Rock Continuous Mining is the title of today's video. Why are we saying that? Because of this tweet on the 18th of August, which was almost two weeks ago. So, Proofwalk 3 testing has kicked off in Bastrop, targeting full continuous mining, i.e. the machine never stops. So, very, very big statement this from the Boeing company, because as you know, this is absolutely critical to the core mission of beating the snail, because... The issue with current tunnel boring machines, TBMs, and also Proof Rock 2 is that you are constantly stopping and starting, and there's lots and lots of things going on, and um, it's a two-stage process at this very moment in time. So, number one, you're assembling the tunnel lining, the concrete segments, around the uh, perimeter of your excavation, then you thrust the machine forward using those concrete segments that you have just assembled uh, and bolted together to push you forward uh, approximately uh, 70, 80 centimeters, 800 mil. Uh, and then you stop, then you start assembling the segments again. Um, you've got to keep the, the, the cutter head spinning Maybe one RPM at this point is not cutting through anything. It's just churning up all that material in the excavation chamber, costing you energy, costing you efficiency, costing you money. So it's not a, a good... Well, it, it, it is good because you get a tunnel at the end, end of it and you can use that to make money, but this does not seem efficient to a lot of people. And the, the kind of um, battle that's been going on in the tunneling industry since the 1960s has been to achieve, achieve continuous mining. In some sense, they have already achieved that on certain jobs, um, but uh, not uh, really the perfect solutions. So another thing they mentioned as well was sub 24 hour surface launching. So that's porpoising. They've really got very, very good at that recently. Extremely good. That is one of the most impressing, uh, impressive things they've done this year is really perfect the porpoising um, process really effective effective uh, means of, of kind of getting the machine on on site assembling that machine quickly uh, calibrating that machine then launching that machine and and whilst you're doing all that setting up the back end of the machine all the logistics you need to run that construction site so let's talk about full continuous mining because to date the tunneling industry has had two kind of solutions to this one that has been used on less than well less than one percent of tunneling projects and another solution that is is very common in the hard rock um areas where they're construction constructing tunnels and we have two options that i see that are currently on the market that potentially the boring company could either modify or adapt now, theoretically, they could adopt both these solutions at the same time, although that really goes against kind of um, the simplicity that we've seen from Tesla and SpaceX, Neuralink, all the other Elon Musk companies. So it, it, it looks to me like they're going to focus on one of these. Um, both of these could work. However, one of them has a major drawback um, 
and over, the other one has a slightly uh, minor drawback that, that can be corrected, I believe, with a solution that I proposed in a previous video. So, switch to hexagonal segments, which I really, really like. I've talked about this in previous videos. I think this is an excellent uh, solution and could be utilized with what is called a bridging piece to then enable you to use trapezoidal segments in uh, curved elements of the uh, uh, the alignment and then you use another bridging piece and you switch back to hexagonal segments. Uh, grip units are used very commonly by uh, many other um, uh, tunnel boring machine manufacturers, uh, operators, that kind of thing. So Heron Connect, Robins, that kind of thing, a lot of the Chinese operators. Uh, and you'd use something called a gripper unit. Um, that provides a horizontal force against the walls of the excavation using hydraulic cylinders. Immense amounts of pressure, obviously it depends on the size of the machine, but it could be very much in excess of uh, 50 tons worth of uh, hydraulic pressure being exerted on the sides of the, that excavation. And then you obviously thrust forward using your um, hydraulic cylinders. It's labeled on here as the propel cylinders. And uh, that does, does work. So let's talk about those options. So first of all, the option that I really, really like and I believe can be modified. So hexagonal concrete segments, as you can see by this incredible illustration here, which was an absolute amazing find on my behalf. Um, they have taken the tunnel lining, um, the perimeter of this um, tunnel, and they have laid it out flat to kind of illustrate how it works. So you have an erection and an erection sequence here and then two thrust sequences. And when one is thrusting, the other is erecting. When the other is erecting, the other is thrusting. And um, you can continuously mine whilst all this is going on. Uh, you have less force uh, to thrust forward, but you can make that up by using either more hydraulic cylinders or more um, powerful hydraulic cylinders. The only issue with that is that does provide uh, excessive forces to the uh, concrete segments. So usually what ends up happening is you utilize uh, additional reinforcement in those segments and or you increase the thickness and the, the thickness might increase by as much as 20 to 25% uh, depending on uh, how big your machine is. Uh, but this does work. This example here is a water tunnel I believe in Italy, I might be wrong, somewhere in Europe, uh, that they constructed using this um, system and it works extremely well in straight lines. Uh, two core issues with this system, you get slippage at the joints, which can be a problem because ultimately you may need to come back and do some remediation work to repair that, that damage but it does, in general, it doesn't really slow the progress of the job. So it's just a couple of you know extra pieces that you need to, to uh, repair at the end. Um, depending on how hard you go forward, uh, that can be significantly reduced. Another issue is it really struggles going around corners. You're having to use packers and things like this. And ultimately, you end up with a system that is not watertight. In fact, it's far from watertight. Uh, and again, you're having to use remedial action um, and really in certain circumstances where you have a high water table, really, this is this is really difficult to use. Um, you can maybe get over that by using some uh, form of grouting um, and then patching up at the end. So it's not an impossibility, uh, but going around corners is a real struggle. So you, I have proposed using some kind of steel bridging piece, then going back to trapezoidal segments like they're currently using at this very moment, going around that corner, using another steel bridging piece, then going back to trapezo uh, uh, hexagonal segments, my apologies, and then you go on a nice straight line, you know, for two miles, then you've got a corner, use trapezoidal segments for 300 meters, use that bridging piece, boom, straight line again. So it, it can be done, I really like this system, I think it works really, really well. Um, I think you can overcome those problems with some really solid engineering solutions. So I like this system. I've not seen the boring company build any segments of this shape or size. Um, so it would indicate to me that it's probably not this going to be this solution, which is very disappointing for me because I've been trying to tell the boring company about this for a long time. But hey, they are the experts. I'm just some guy 
who worked on a few construction sites. <laughs> so what else is there? Hydraulic gripper unit. So again, I looked at the image that we've seen previously of uh, Proofrock 3. I could not see any, um, any system as such, a gripper unit system. Uh, I could not see any grip issues. I could not see anything that indicates that they're going to use this kind of system. Uh, but this system does work very, very well on medium to hard rock that is relatively unfractured. Uh, it provides immense force to the side to the side walls of the excavation. And then you push forward. Uh, you could argue it's a lot more reliable than the existing um, multitude of thrust cylinders that we see today. Um, it, it, do, it in no way damages the uh, segments. A big problem in a lot of uh, tunneling jobs is, is you see kind of fractures and, and, and uh, spalling and, and various other uh, uh, damage to the uh, tunnel lining as you're going forward. Um, one bad segment can cost you days. Um, so in, in a way you're avoiding thrusting off the segments. This is, so, but it does in some cases damage the external walls of the excavation but given that you're going to cover that up and grout behind it it doesn't really matter too much so this works really really well medium to, to hard rock it does not work well in soft granular um strata in fact it doesn't even work it it, it basically just does not work so in las vegas and in austin this system would work reasonably well and uh, that might be a reason why they choose this. Uh, but if you were going through certain areas, it, it just would not work and you'd have to adopt something else. And you wouldn't even get one meter per hour out of it because it, it's just gonna, you know, go through the, the side, side excavation of the, uh, the tunnel um, like a stiletto through grass. So that's one issue with this. Um, another issue that you could add is it's not technically fully 100% continuous mining. So um, once you've thrust yourself forward with the hydraulic cylinders, you then need to move the gripper shoes forward, you know, three and a half meters, four meters, however long the uh, cylinder is, maybe five meters, uh, set that into the size of the excavation, thrust it in. So you're probably um, thrusting forward maybe 45 minutes every hour, which is a considerable improvement on what we've got now. It might be it might be less than 25 minutes at the moment. So 45 minutes is a decent improvement, but it's technically not full on continuous mining. So conclusion, let's go through this nice and quickly. So both options have pros and cons. I like the hexagonal segments, but obviously it's not great in a straight line. You'd have to make some modifications and use some trapezoidal segments. So then you've got the disadvantages of using those trapezoidal segments. Uh, you're losing continuous mining for, you know, periods where the alignment is curved, but you could adjust the route to make it straighter and have um, uh, deeper curves possibly. So, uh, and the, the main con with the, uh, the gripper unit is it, it's, it only works in medium to hard rock and it's technically not full on continuous mining, but it's so close that it's probably worth, uh, uh, you know, considering and approaching. There's no reason why the boring company couldn't build both these systems and have different variants for different soil types. So it, it, that might be a great approach. There's no technical explanation so far from the boring company. I have no idea what they're going to do. I've looked at the image. I can't see any hexagonal segments on the site at Bastrop. Trust me, I've looked using the drone footage. It's not there. I've looked at the image of Proofrock 3. I cannot see any openings for the gripper. I cannot see any gripper units at the rear of the uh, uh, TBM or anywhere near the uh, excavation chamber. So it, it, unless it's, it's incredibly well hidden, which I doubt, then it's not there. So how they're going to do this, uh, I, I really need an explanation from the Roaring Company. And it's a shame that they've not provided that because they could easily do that in a tweet. They need to be more active on Twitter. And they could tell us this in, in one tweet and then that would result in an excellent video. Continuous mining enables 80 meters to 120 meters maximum 
per day with Proofrock 3. Now you're probably thinking, well, if they want to do one mile per week, uh, it's gonna be 60 to 70% more than your maximum there will. So why is that? Well, the 120 meter limit is determined by maintenance from wear and tear. If you're in a uh, hard rock, medium rock, um, you're gonna have serious wear and tear when you're doing 120 meters per day. So you're going to need to be doing three hours of maintenance every day or maybe six hours every two days. So you're losing considerable time and that needs to be taken into account. So unless you can reduce maintenance by making adjustments to the cutter teeth, cutter discs, then you're gonna be stuck 120 meters in my opinion, based on my research. A possible third option uh, is a rack and pinion system, which I've looked at in a previous video. However, running the numbers, it would provide nowhere near enough thrust. Um, way less than half uh, the thrust of a gripper unit, no matter how you do it. Um, so I've kind of ruled that out, but I mean, that might be an option, but we'll have to see. It's never, ever, ever been used on any other previous jobs in the history of, of mining. So it would be a first and obviously thought with difficulty. Really unsure how they will make this work. But I guess we'll see. Maybe that's the exciting thing is that eventually we do find out what it is. Okay guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. I really hope you learned something. Um, hopefully we can re-explore this topic again in the next two months and maybe we'll have more information from the Boeing Company. If you've not already done so, please like and subscribe, hit the bell icon. Really, really appreciate that. The best thing you can do for me in this channel is to go into uh, my channel and, and watch another video. That would be very much appreciative. Consider following me on these various uh, social media. Oh, it's technically not Twitter anymore, is it? I need to change that. <sighs> need to change that, guys, to get the X logo. Very, very sorry. I'll do that next week. Uh, Patreons, wow, guys. Such a lot of support, and it continues every day. That's wonderful. Thank you all for everything. Really, very much appreciate that. And okay, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, don't be boring. We'll see you on the next video. Take care now. These are exciting times. Tesla's winning. The Boring Company's winning. SpaceX is winning. Neuralink is winning. And X.com is winning. So all in all, it's a happy time to be an Elon Musk fan. See you on the